Welcome everybody to the Movie Overload podcast. Uh, this is a film podcast. I'm gonna do it again. Sure is. Let's do it. Let's do it again. Ready? Woo! Okay. That peaked. I'm yeah, sorry. Totally did. Yeah. I'm <laughs> not going to be that loud anymore. Intriguing. Um. Yeah. Okay. You've been. You've been, you've been peak you, control. Okay. Been degamed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That sounds so bad. Just don't flash Wait. up any random pictures of mermaids, and we'll be fine. Oh. Thank you. What? Just do 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 power down. Yeah, that's oh, that was like. my speaker. A Bluetooth. Oh. Okay. Welcome, everybody, to the Movie Overload podcast, our little friendly corner of the internet where we go through 100 films uh, through the history of cinema from a trip to the moon to Paris and everything in between. Uh, except for Woody Allen. Because we don't like him. Ooh. No. I would. He's <laughs> He's a fucker. <laughs> He <laughs> is a stick up a camel's rectum. Oh, ooh. That's a, ooh. <laughs> that, I mean, it thematically appropriate, I suppose. It is. You hear the ice tinkling. You were having lemonade. Uh, I'm having lemonade. I bet you couldn't guess why. In a teacup. In a te- yeah. Wonderful. It was more delightful, honestly. Heck yeah. Anna did. I don't actually. have any normal cups. You, Anna, you did text me in the middle of the movie when you got to the, the lemonade scene. And you're like, did you know this I was did. in here? <laughs> I took a picture of it. It's, it's a good scene, right? It's not just me. It is a good scene. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's just like, like he's it. all shaky. I, would like I mean, that's, lemonade. that's where it gets me. And then he's like, I need, I need a, a room and a bed. And they're like, can't be done. He goes, for him? <laughs> And he's shaking, and they're like, "In that scene, okay. he's just so much." <laughs> oh my goodness! Nobody Peter can O'Toole give is that hot performance this. like Peter O'Toole. He's cute. He's really I don't cute. find him attractive. Personally. He's he's adorable. He looks. Kind I will of say, scary. at first, I was like, "Ooh, hmm." At first, okay. And then, you, and then, then he, looks he started little, killing like, people, he and looks I was like, "Plastic uh, surgeon to see, me." He looks like a plastic surgeon. <laughs> Lawrence in this movie, not a great dude. In real life, not a great dude either. But Peter O'Toole is okay. I like. I think he's good. I think he's good. Okay. I have conflicting feelings on everything about this movie, except for the visuals, which I can just unabashedly say it shouldn't even be possible. Oh, and you hate yeah. the score, right? You hate <laughs> that score. Oh, oh man, I guess that's two things. Yeah, it's two yeah. things. It's really perfect. I do think this movie would be like five stars one of the greatest films if it wasn't four hours long <laughs> okay. that's the only thing against it but how could that okay i'm interested to hear your take on this because i'm sure you have some good defense for it because i don't see how it could be as good as it is if it wasn't as long as it was that's because valid. it's like in essence it, i mean it's the epic it's kind of the film epic if there's if yeah. there's another one that is more legendary then I, I will yeah. I will concede, but like okay, so Lawrence of Arabia is the epic. Here's my problem with the movie: the movie literally does not have any women in it. Uh, even though not uh, true, there were some dead women. Yes, they they said yeah. so many lines; they had so much agency. <laughs> uh, but there was actually he. Uh, the real Lawrence of Arabia had an advisor and a close friend who was a woman and played oh. a big part in the proceedings who just wasn't in the movie. Okay, you yeah, know. Yeah. yeah. That's lame. But okay. do you know what... Wow. I wouldn't what, have cared except that they deliberately didn't include someone uh-huh. and now I feel grumpy. Well, it yep. tears me up inside because this is a movie about a bunch of cute guys. Omar Sharif, also cute. Uh, how is this movie snap. not more gay? <laughs> this is like the straightest movie, You're right. but it's all hot dudes walking around a desert. Like how? <laughs> I was thinking about that the whole time. I was like, "There's like, there's zero gay here at all," and it. Well, it's because the it's military. Uh, okay, but no, the military Beau, is extremely Beau de Trava, gay. The Claire okay, Denis movie, but yeah. most modern military movies are actually pretty darn gay. But it's because the military is pretty darn gay. Aren't there like, like jokes about that? Well, I was referencing that? like one okay. of the generals gave me just like <laughs> sketchy military vibes, mm. you know, where you're like, ooh, 
you make me nervous. Yeah. I am scared to be female around you. Like that kind of vibes. I can't uh, remember who it was. Was it the dude who's like following him around places or was he like the dude in the room who was just like sitting there? I think it was the dude that was following him around. Okay. No. That's fair. He's not great. You know, it's funny though because I was looking at the, like the British officer uniforms and they're all just like so neatly dressed and they're so like you know one would almost say flamboyant like they're they're, they're they have a feminine side <laughs> yeah and i really just was like how is the british army not like literally the gayest possible thing <laughs> like well, why didn't wham just tour around wearing like british army uniforms you know what i mean did they they might have. <laughs> It sounds like something. It sounds a bit. I mean, can, can we do like a Photoshop where we put like all of the members of like Wham and like Freddie Mercury and like a bunch of like legends into like this movie? Yeah. <laughs> well, so see, well, but this movie is not the same as just putting them in British military uniforms. Well, yeah, yeah I guess it's like because this movie is like sociopathic. This movie is a lot of things. I'm curious. Yeah, I don't know. I want to hear other people talk about this movie because I'm I'm kind of all over the map with it and I feel like I don't have the vocabulary to really talk about the things that sometimes border on being problematic and other times like jump right off of it and other times are surprisingly not problematic and it feels yeah. like it's kind of all over the place and I want somebody else to talk about it. Thanks. This movie is over numerousness. Ness. Ness. Hmm. What? One more Ness. Explain. That's that's a reference to a show that I used to like but now have trouble liking anymore. Hmm. Because heck the internet. I wish it didn't exist. I anyway. know. I hate finding <laughs> out that like somebody who like wrote something that you really love is like the worst person or like specifically yeah. hates you or something. Yeah. Like Yeah. <laughs> that's what it feels like. You, you meet somebody and, and they're like Oh, it turns out this guy's incredibly racist, and you're like, I, that I mean, that shouldn't affect me personally, but like for some reason that that feels like finding out that somebody that you know and like hates you. Uh huh. It just ruins it. Well, and going back to this movie, I did some cursory research on the historical accuracy of Lawrence of Arabia, mm. uh, and the surrounding events in the historical narrative around this story of. Uh, uh, T.E. Lawrence um, are hotly debated to this day. Like, there isn't a great consensus. Uh, the most you can say is that this book, this film, is very fa faithful to the memoir that the real Lawrence wrote called The Seven Pillars of Wisdom, which <laughs> is, uh, it became like a worldwide bestseller after his death, um, because basically when he came out of the military, he went into hiding for a bit because he's pretty high profile after the news stories in America and everything. And he served out another term of military service in the Air Force under an assumed name, then died in a motorcycle crash. And uh, he wrote the first – the book he wrote twice. First time he wrote it uh, like right after the war. I think it was like 1919 or something like that. Mm. Uh it was like right after he got out and he lost it at a train station. <laughs> and so he just wrote it again, gave it to some friends. They're like, this is great. They turned it into a newspaper editor and then they condensed it down and everyone was bad at them. And then they released it. And after his death, uh, it got really big and it kind of has made a lot of historical like diving around this period very difficult because – Everyone, it, the narrative so focuses Lawrence in the like the book and the way that history is formed around it. It's like Josephus in like ancient texts okay. where now, oh, he wrote this, and now because this has become the de definitive like version of the story, it's really hard to pick out some other things because we know of a number of other like military generals in this area who were fighting in the Jordan mm. at the same time doing very similar things, but they have been completely like lost to the popular narrative of Lawrence of Arabia coming in, blowing up the train lines, which fun fact, 
all those train lines he blew up never actually wound up getting rebuilt. Hmm. Like wow. so they they were starting to build it through through the war and now a bunch of people in those nations are really regretting the decision to like openly let uh that sort of warfare go on because they they never wound up rebuilding it and so it's kind of fractured the countries that took place in because they no longer have rail lines going fully from north to south of the country they only go about halfway down and so it it is kind of isn't brain has turned off uh (laughs) my brain does that i'm sorry all other brains do that but yeah but no that is interesting because like there's definitely a lot of aspects of this and i think world one in particular world war one in particular because in watching movies on world war ii or reading about world war ii you're generally like okay that's like sort of you know if they didn't have cell phones you know it's, it's the world that we kind of know now a lot of the same sort of nation lines and they just all fight each other for reasons mm-hmm. that are relatively simple to understand. <laughs> and not just thinking about World War One as I'm watching this movie, I'm like, oh yeah, this is like a completely different thing. Like all of these countries existed that don't exist now. And there's like the Ottoman Empire over here and there's a bunch of whack things going on. And there's a bunch of really, really random convoluted reasons why any of it's happening to begin with. Mm. Um, I have, I'm, I'm going to do the, like the ultimate uh no no of of <laughs> podcasting which is when you describe a meme <laughs> nice i've heard it done but I'm here sometimes for this. there is a picture of squidward wearing a military uniform and looking <laughs> dejected and sad and it says when a serb kills an austrian in bosnia so you an englishman must fight the germans in france yeah <laughs> <laughs> and i mean that's if that's not world war one i don't know what is it's it's just kind of one of those things that makes you go. Ah, the French. Ah, you shoehorned it. We mentioned France, and so nice. I had to try. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work. Of course, you added that, was that to perfect. the board. End the right episode. The that was perfect. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Mike, Surely we have drop French movies. Ugh. Anyway, it just it makes it very hard to talk about a movie like this because there's a lot of things going on that are really hard to understand. Anyway, yeah. In, in terms of the the politics, like uh-huh. I I heard one person review it saying, "Ah, a colonizer's tale is like apparently the film epic that everybody separate that everybody celebrates." And then the commenter is like, "But it's not a colonizer's tale. The whole point is that he's trying to like give." the arabs their own land but at the same time mm-hmm. he fails in doing that by trying to sort of reconstruct british parliament in a weird way with them and is also the one that's sort of in charge it's the quintessential uh, white savior narrative <laughs> if the quintessential white savior narrative realized it halfway through and tried to backpedal True. and it was yeah. like no so okay we know that this is this is weird uh and it's gonna keep being weird most of the arabs who speak in this are actually latinx actors you know <laughs> like if not just alec guinness <laughs> yeah right. yeah just straight white people. Just yeah. literally obi-wan is like uh, you know whatever. i'm yeah. uh i'm an arab now well it does, it does seem mm. like for the film he does have a heart for trying to help them like, right he's like i uh-huh. do want this like it seems he's like, well intentioned he's talking, mostly yeah and then he's like talking to his people he's like i'm really trying to help them and i'm telling them that you guys don't have any ulterior motives because i don't have any he's like you don't right and they're like no what? <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's fine. So just tell him the alternative <laughs> murder, m- motives already so we can just get on yeah, with the plot. He's just like, okay. Like, yeah, it's not good. Yeah, and then they like, and then of course, because Claude Rains has yes. to be in a movie like this, there's yes. no way that he isn't. Claude! Claude Rains is my favorite person ever. Oh my God. I forgot that we had seen like that he was in this when we were talking about Casablanca mm-hmm. and stuff. And then I just like saw him and I didn't really recognize him because he's in color and older. And then he just starts talking and I'm like, oh, it's my boy. It's, it's the guy. <laughs> it's the guy from Talks Casablanca. Talks the exact same way, basically. He's so good. Yeah. And uh, I watched the original like Merry Adventures of Robin Hood mm-hmm. earlier and mm-hmm. and he's in that and yes. it's great. Um, but of course, he's the one that like, you know, he's got to be the sneaky boy. And so he comes mm-hmm. up and he's like, you know you kind of deceived yourself on this. You told a half truth, which is honestly worse than what we're doing anyway. Yeah. Yeah, That was an interesting take. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very Claude Rains type move to make. I'm, I'm just assuming that Claude Rains is just this kind of person in real life. And they just like get him to come in and 
and say sneaky shit. He's like actually <laughs> he's actually like a persistent character through like a bunch of different movies. Even yes. though he has different names, it's actually like all the same. We should uh, watch yeah. his movies, but like in chronological <laughs> order, which which means watching first the Merry Adventures uh, of Robin Hood and then this movie because uh, this is World War One, and mm. then him in Casablanca because that's a World War Two movie. Mm-hmm. I, I like the idea of watching an actor's filmography under the assumption that they are always playing the same yes. person <laughs> and being like, huh. That makes Adam Driver's how, career very confusing. How did, how did this happen? I was about like, to say Tom Felton, anyone? <laughs> well, doesn't he always play like the worst guy? So uh, yeah, I guess movies. that makes sense. Him, yeah. What was the movie we watched recently? You and I watched something recently where he was just the worst. But he, he was didn't... like super racist. And... Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, that was, was like it? some Regency movie, wasn't it? Mm. Oh, it was Bell, and yes, he was the yeah. racist guy. He was the really <laughs> racist one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, who also like I assaulted guess. her. Yeah. Yeah. He did. Yeah. <laughs> See, in my head, I remember him in that movie because I remember him getting like the crap beaten out of him and like his yeah. nose kicked in. And I don't know if that actually happens in the movie or if that's just my imagination <laughs> watching cool. him do things. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably <laughs> the latter. Yeah. Um, just mentally insert suffering. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think if I could express my emotion after mm-hmm. watching this movie mm-hmm. in one word, I would say grumpy. Mm. Oh. I finished this movie and I was grumpy about it. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> because I mean, like I have been like sewing and crocheting. I did laundry. I had a great day. Uh, but yeah, I finished it and I was like, okay, I'm investing in this character. I'm investing in the culture. I'm investing in these people's struggle to find independence after being owned by empires. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it just like ends with the worst ending ever or maybe the mm-hmm. best ending ever. I don't know. I was frustrated at how long it took to tell the story when it seemed like the main themes of the story which Mm -hmm. I would say are personal, like, oh, what's the word they use? When when the guy doesn't want his picture taken, virtue, Mm -hmm. virtue, Mm -hmm. personal virtue Mm -hmm. being taken away by camera. So technology, that kind of thing. That theme I saw really big. And then another theme that I picked up on, let me find my notes. Oh, the desert being clean versus soaking Mm -hmm. up blood, Mm -hmm. which I thought was really Mm -hmm. fascinating because at first Lawrence says, I love the desert because it's clean. And at the end, he's like, I'm never going back to the desert. There's too much blood. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Those themes of making a name for yourself and finding your identity and writing the story, I feel like they could have done it differently but maybe it's not bad that I was grumpy at the end. Maybe that's the point of I the movie. I think it's supposed to be kind of frustrating because, I mean, from what I've, I mean, kind of from what I've read historically, like this push kind of failing mm-hmm. has led to essentially what's been happening in the Middle East forever, which is, mm-hmm. you know, there's always some Western nation messing everything up all of the time, constantly. A lot and of it's the. Gross. Uh, historical commentators that I read, I read three of them. So, but all three wow. of them mentioned that this is the story of Lawrence uh, T.S. Lawrence here uh, is basically a Shakespearean tragedy. Hmm. At, yeah, after this point, that. everyone's life involved just goes downhill. This is the like the great fight for valor that winds up inevitably failing, hmm. and hmm. it's interesting. Along with those themes that you brought up, Anna, I also noticed a a major theme of Lawrence's internal struggle between his own, um, like, seemingly Bloodlust. earnest desire to actually help these people and uh, help this this culture that he really seems to love. Mm-hmm. Uh, be able to flourish like his duty as an Englishman versus his duty as a person who likes the um, the culture but also his own he's being overcome with his own megalomania mm-hmm. when he just he he gets that point of transformation halfway through the film where more than halfway through the film that's like three quarters <laughs> away through the film where he goes uh, to the one village and gets captured by the Turks and then has 
the closest thing to a gay scene in the entire film <laughs> where the captain strips him down, like uh, rubs his hand down his chest and then they cut to like a shot of the guy who's torturing his lips yeah. and then Lawrence punches him in the face and then gets whipped repeatedly. That's the closest we come. I that it's not it's not, it's, it's not even that close. <laughs> but doesn't count. <laughs> he comes out of that experience because <laughs> this this guy he just goes into a town in the Jordan wearing some mildly dirty clothes and he's like I'm invisible. No one can see me. And his friend With my blue eyes right next to him's <laughs> like this isn't going to work out. Are you crazy? <laughs> The answer is yes. <laughs> yes, he is. He gets, I am crazy. Oh, uh, he gets his... Look into my <laughs> eyes. What does it mean that, like, if this is a pretty, you know, uh, relatively historically accurate, or it's, or it's accurate what? to his own narrative, Yeah, it's interesting that he's painted himself in a light that I think a lot of us don't like, right? Like, he's not exactly the most likable person, and he's yeah. painting himself that way, so is it, like this sort of recognition of of his own failures or does he still is he still kind of stuck in this idea of grandeur it's it feels like it's hard to really tell where he ends up by the end of the film in that sense because i because despite it being a story about him and you see all the stuff that he's overcome Mm -hmm. it's really more about and i think that's why the length works for me as any epic i feel like is about it's long because you're seeing particular in something really grand And so Mm. there's a lot of particular. And so it hurts a lot more Mm. when it doesn't work out. Right. Mm. Because you've, you've, you've not just been there for, wow, this grand narrative of something that didn't work out and there's slow motion at the end of bombs going off or or whatever, (laughs) but it's, it's like, oh, it's just done. It's just done. Like Like all of the time that's in Ben invested all the time. I feel like I've invested as a viewer. Everything Mm -hmm. is for not. And I actually feel like that's how Shakespeare and tragedies feel to me. I don't feel like they give you this great big grand, you know, dramatic thing at the end. Like obviously people die at the end of Shakespearean Mm -hmm. tragedies and there's, you know, whatever, but it always feels like it just kind of ends abruptly in the bad and -hmm. doesn't just like give you the full like emotional payoff is, I don't know if anybody else feels that way, but well, so sure. Hamlet and Lear and whatever the catharsis uh, in Shakespearean tragedies is from the Shakespeare classes I take <laughs> it drawn from the fact of watching a character uh, come up against insurmountable, insurmountable ugh, mm-hmm. odds that You're cannot close. be surmounted, <laughs> and <laughs> the act of watching someone be broken down of the the catharsis comes when the person is finally broken where they're the thing that is driving them forward their sole intention like their purpose winds up becoming their downfall and it's that dramatic irony there where because they wanted to do this, because Lear wanted to find his child who loved him the most, because he wasn't actually able to see love, it wound up driving the person he loves the most away from him and leading to his death. Yeah, but there's also the... But I think that's... If it just ends there, then it ends like on... You know, comparable would be like Act 3 of A Winter's Tale or something like that, right? Where he's like, okay, uh, now my uh, now my wife is dead and my son is dead and everything's bad and that's all my fault. But it, I don't feel like it ends there because there's there's the extra bit, right? Like, because Lear, Lear, for example, comes back and is like close with his daughter and he's like, you know, they're they're sent into they're captured together, they're mm. sent into prison. And he's like, uh, you know, he, he, he they're they're together in that end and it doesn't work out anyway. Well, yeah, and so like, part of that is because it's, of him, but. But it's also the, the tragedy is everything is broken. That that's why the big final rush is not the place where the tragedy tragedy leaves you, because it isn't left with a grand conclusion. It's left there hanging because it's a lackluster one. It's it's burning out brightly before you spent all your energy on this final push and it made no no effort and then you have the denouement as you're sitting there and you just watch 
them be just overtaken. Mm-hmm. And, and so I think that the ending feels very lackluster in Lawrence of Arabia. I well, totally especially agree. because they weren't actually overtaken. They just gave up. Yeah. They basically gave up after that one. But yeah. Yeah. Like, this is too hard. Yeah. I don't wanna. And there's like it's and that I think is interesting partially because it's like well, one that's sort of a tragedy because of I mean, I think a lot of it is because of what we know now has happened there, right? Mm. But mm-hmm. I think another aspect of that is like, well, also did it fail because this wasn't the right way to go about this to begin with? Like is forcing a basic like you know british parliament type system they're like is that bad sort of to begin with to be like no nah, do it do it the english way mm. you know what i mean like in a weird sense is despite him like trying to you know in a sense like he, he loves the culture and he loves the people and he wants them to have their own place yet he almost kind of just even if he's not trying to colonialize, he's also westernizing in the process. Mm -hmm. And that's for me, maybe the reason why it is a tragedy. Like it, why it sucks is because it's like, you can't kind of go in and, and yeah, try to be like, Oh, because I care about you, I'm going to try to change everything. Like I'm going to change the way that this is like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, and so what do we think is the like the point in the film that I spoiled for you all because <laughs> I am an <laughs> arsehole. No, uh, no, no, no. I, it was funny. Like <laughs> that moment comes right before their grand victory, before they take the take Damascus. Mm-hmm. It's it's a moment where uh, an actual historical event, uh, uh, fifteen hundred Turks who were fleeing from uh, a battle the night before and had. Uh, raided a village that one of Lawrence's men was staying at. Uh, they were all slaughtered by Lawrence's um, troop after having ostensibly surrendered to some uh, extent. Uh, and so the, that march in historical relevance terms was started by that one guy just rushing out with his sword, mm. try, uh, just going out by himself. And then Lawrence did say, take no prisoners. Uh, and then they did kill all of them. And so when I saw that, my reading is that it's it feels like the the thing that made Lawrence honorable, his like mercy, like the hmm. the Lord mentions like his uh, he has a passion for mercy. I just think mm-hmm. of it as good manners. Uh, Lawrence's passion for mercy, his, his bloodlust finally overcomes his like morality and his his values and so the desire to win and his sadism like he he is frightened by the fact how much he enjoys killing people that part of him just overcoming him i, I think kind of mirrors what winds up happening with the fall of damascus where they set up this government and they try and all do it, but because they are so focused on success, they stop paying attention to what their motivations were. Hmm. Why were they doing this? What is the purpose of this Arab Damascus? How? What is it supposed to be? It doesn't matter. We need to just make it work. Let's just set it up like the British Parliament. Let's just try and call everything to order. Let's try and get all these people to work together uh, it, out, out of nothing, even though we are have limited resources and we have no bargaining chips other than the city. It feels like when you're trying to start a podcast with a bunch of people who don't like podcasting or something. <laughs> I've done that a few times and I've had oh. them fizzle out, but it's like it's like the attempt of like, oh, we should do something about this thing and nobody cares about that thing. And you're like, but we could do it anyway. And you just ultimately <laughs> you can't be enough of the glue to make it work. You have to have like this podcast, people who have thoughts and brains. I wonder if to Thank kind you. of change the Sometimes. subject. Always. I mean, not change the subject, but like. Yes. Responding to what Aiden said. <laughs> I was the one who changed the subject. <laughs> well, 
calling me out. <laughs> Sorry. Do it, do it. No, but it's I, true. I like, had a thought brewing, yeah. and it was brewing. Anyway, um, what one of the clan leaders said when he go- he got when he got his clock, and he was like, "I just want to find something honorable," and the clock didn't work. Mm. And when they come across the train of horses, and he sees that one white horse, and he's like, "Yes, this is the honorable." loot i guess and he says to the general and to lawrence once you find the thing that you're looking for you'll go home we all will and the Mm. one general guy says no no no. i'll serve my country i'll never go home and the lord kind of was like "Mm, you will you you have the thing that you're looking for and once you find it you're gonna go home Mm. and i wonder if that's like lawrence never knew what he was looking for and so mm-hmm. he could never going actually home go home was never oh i finally found my honor i found mm. my item i found my purpose and now i'm going home fulfilled he just realized that what he was looking for was that he was hiding his bloodlust and sadism as aiden said and so once he yeah. found it once he realized that he found it he went home in shame because he didn't find honor in that right yeah. And maybe that's why the ending is that's so frustrating, reading. too, because you can see that yeah. in his story that he realizes every time he comes to a place where he asks his leaders, please send me home. I like murdering people. Send me home. And they're like, no, 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 no. You're promoted. Oh, Get back out there, young man. We like, like it when you murder uh, people. <laughs> it is funny, like talking with them. I feel like I always got the idea that like they're kind of weirded out by him. They're like, you did all these things without anyone really telling to you to it kind of freaks me out, but like you were pretty effective. So like keep doing it, I guess. Oh, <laughs> uh, what well, ultimately helping. it seems like they didn't like him. I mean, I guess that's how sort yeah. of the, how the mm-hmm. ending is like, we're, we're both glad to be rid of him. Yeah. Yeah. But, but right. It's, yeah. He he kind to, of... But, but he's like so effective and so influential and whatever that like, they kind of have to let him. Yeah. Like they, they don't really have a choice anyway. Right. Their hand mm-hmm. is kind of forced by him, yeah. his existence. To go back onto that scene, Anna brought up, uh, this isn't deep or poetic <laughs> or, or, or anything. It's just my favorite line in the movie where the general says, I don't want anything when I get, when we get what, what I get, what I, what I want, I stay here because I have a duty to my country. And the, ch- uh, the clan leader uh, says, "Then you are a stupid man." It's like, <laughs> "I'm fine, thank you. You you should well, thank God that He gave you a stupid face uh, to match yeah, your yeah. stupidness." Yeah, that was gonna it's be like, my God quote. gave you a fool's yeah. face. Oh, now I have to find it. No, one. use it. Put it in and double it. Okay. Nah. I don't know. Uh, oh. <laughs> it is. It's a good line. It's a funny movie. It has a fool's it, face. It has like. It's not like a Marvel movie where they just have jokes every few minutes and you're like, yeah, it's funny, but they don't really stick out because there are a lot of them. And they're not good. <laughs> they're, no, they're, sorry, they're, that's yeah. my own personal editorializing. <laughs> <laughs> they're Marvel movie jokes. They f- serve a very particular purpose, and I think they do that efficiently enough. I hate Joss Whedon's sense of humor. It's a good thing he only I made two Joss movies. Whedon. <laughs> True, but I feel like that was influential on how a lot it of it worked. Was. Like, there's a difference between the John Favreau humor and the Taika Waititi humor yes. and the Joss Whedon humor. And I feel yes. like all of the directors who have no idea how to direct humor just default to Joss Whedon. Yes. There is a consistent Oof. style. But anyway, this movie has it. very pointed jokes yes. that happen and yeah. great moments that are just endlessly amusing. Take, for instance, my favorite scene in all of cinema in the 1960s, mm-hmm. uh, the lemonade the scene <laughs> where Lawrence oh. walks into the bar with, with his little servant friend and everyone's like, you can't be here. He's not British. You can't. And he's just, give me two large glasses of lemonade, please. <laughs> Get me a room with a large bed and a nice window. And sheets. 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 It's for him. <laughs> it's for him. Thank you, uh, nameless person. Who, I oh, we didn't even introduce ourselves my, today. My name, my name is Potato Peel Baby. Potato Peel Baby. Friend. I'm Potato, potato peel, peel Baby. I'm Potato Peel Peel Baby Friend. And what are your names? Now I'm that you know Anna. we're here. Wow. Butts I was, McGinty. I, whoa. Butts. I mean, I was, oh. <laughs> what? My name's oh. Aiden. I I just go on. Go on. <laughs> I'm the only one allowed to have a name. I'm Hunter. 
All right. I okay. Guys. This is a rant. Mm-hmm. Some of you Go have heard this rant. Mm-hmm. I've never gotten a nickname really before, and I was really sad about it. And then in high school, I played ultimate frisbee, and everyone was like Anna Chase, and everyone here at Northwest calls me Anna Chase. So like my my RA is like, hey Anna Chase, hmm. and that's huh. my nickname. And I feel like your it's nickname just kind of is. Like- just your name but more <laughs> it's yeah it's, it's like my whole name <laughs> interesting. is my nickname i keep trying to like think of a good one but i feel like it needs to just sort of happen and so then i like yeah. think of a good one and then i don't use it that's on me we thought of one the other day and i forgot it immediately that's it the happens. thing with nicknames they just happen uh if there are some people who try to force nicknames my grandpa feels the need to have a nickname for everyone in my family. Jeez. And they come across naturally, except for my mom, because my mom doesn't have nicknames stick to her. Uh, so he decided that he was going to spend a lot of time and create one and craft one. And the name he came up with was Foxy Roxy. Nope. Nope. Uh, nope. 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 Uh, no, no, no. because she's a pharmacist, no. and apparently that works. I hate uh, it. But I also, it my uh, actually, I really hate that. Uh, Wait, geez. is this his daughter or his daughter-in-law? That's his daughter-in-law. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I nope. Don't like it. I it's, really uh, don't want it's it. No, it's not please. good. What makes it worse though <laughs> is because oh, no. uh, my mom's mom's best friend was named Roxy, oh. and her name is actually Roxy Fox. Oh shoot. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I don't uh, want to know any of this. I don't know why I hate it so much. It's, <laughs> yeah, you really have it's, a hard time with this. Yeah. It's, it really, it's uh, now you understand why uh, neither uh, my sibling nor I really like my grandpa that much. Uh, <laughs> now well, it's okay. on the internet. Yeah, it's on the internet. And if <laughs> he finds it, he internet. can learn it. If I listen Just back stop to the podcast, coming up I have with to hear weird, this gross again. things. <laughs> I don't know why I hated that so much. I'm sorry. I distracted from your whole point just by freaking out. But that's garbage. It's okay. We all have those things that just trigger us Mm -mm. to no end. Mm -mm. Yeah. It's great. Um, Anyways, so uh, Anna, your new nickname is Palindrome there. Because you... We can just call you you Pal for sure. You just kept calling yourself (laughs) a Palindrome on the first two episodes of the podcast. So I'm forcing you. I know. I, I did... I didn't do my introduction speech because I feel like y'all know who I am by now. And I also have a different voice than Hannah. But, you know, here we are. Uh, I disagree. No, your voices sound exactly the same. Yeah. No one can no, ever not tell that. I just diff- don't know who you are at this point. Like, I, I've known you for so long and yet. So let's talk about Lawrence of Arabia. Uh, it's a movie about a guy who tries really hard um but really but but ends up kind of killing both of the boys in his charge dude that was so sad mm-hmm. like literally he shoot like he's laying down next to him yeah mm-hmm. like yeah <sighs> it's kind of the worst it hurts it's pretty right. much it's, the worst it's the kind of thing that you would read in like in a a memoir and you'd be like wow that's that's pretty rough but you'd be able to get by but then like mm-hmm. translating it into a movie you're like oh this is this is really real stuff it's not just like and i feel like in a memoir that's like half of a sentence you know what i mean yeah or like oh and sadly one of my boys got injured by an explosive and i had to put him out of his misery before mm-hmm. running away because of here's yeah. all of the reasons why i had to do that and and that would be it but instead they're like uh, we'll give it 5 seconds yeah. but we'll murder you with those 5 seconds of screen yeah that was sad yeah. i really don't know how i feel about this movie i feel all over the place with it i think it's i, I mean i mean gosh if you take out the cinematography and you take out the score it's probably boring yeah mm mm-hmm. But when you have those elements but in, it's kind of legendary. And the editing? The editing is really, really good. Like that that famous of all famous cuts where he blows out the match and it cuts to the like sunrise over the Sanhara. Yeah. Ah! It's, mm, it's so good. 
there's a lot like i feel like good editing is the editing that you don't notice usually Mm -hmm. Like there are good moments that you will notice mm-hmm. explicitly, but when the movie just flows in a way that you're not mm-hmm. really paying attention to every time a shot changes, then it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Especially with old movies, because I feel like it's a lot easier to notice a lot of cuts with old movies. Yeah. Well, that's a philosophy of editing. I am also yeah. a big proponent of the philosophy of editing that uh, draws as much attention to itself as, as, as possible. Like the, um, g- I was going to say expositional <laughs> editing, but that's not that's not a thing. Uh you know that sort of vibe where uh you go all uh speed racer on it. Yes. And you get the edit. You just get these wipe cuts and the wipe is a person's face just moving across the screen and it's just completely <laughs> yeah, out of context. That's right. I forgot wipe. about that. Oh, that's so good. We should watch speed racer. Or like uh, uh I was we watching have to do it. Peter Sorry. Turkursky films and uh, those things, you know, just like playing with the medium. This is this has nothing to do with Lawrence of Radio. Someone make <laughs> me stop talking. I will we'll talk about experimental it's, I editing. For hours. Great. I, I do think that there is value to things like experimental editing and, you know, drawing attention to yourself in editing. But I think that's also like a very sort of niche thing. I feel like most movies would probably benefit from not editing themselves like Suicide Squad, for example. You know what I mean? Like it, it takes a very specific movie to work with that kind of editing. Yes. Anyway. And Suicide Squad is not one of those movies. No. <laughs> Stylistic decision. Yes. Was not intended to uh, to be that. Movie. And people just like the trailer. And movie. so they're like, okay, we'll get, we'll get the, tra- the people who edited the trailer to edit the whole movie. So what Mo- happened brilliant. with film scores? Like, when was the last time you saw a film and the score was just like, Ah, like it Little only happens. Women. Ooh, it happens once in a blue good. moon, but it does happen. Yeah. Little Women is a good one. I feel like the reason this episode has so many tangents is because we don't know how to feel about this movie. I really mm. think that's the case. Yeah, I, I first time I saw it, it was uh, it was my favorite. Nice. Um, the first time I saw this movie, I was like, oh, this is one of my favorite movies ever because mm-hmm. I've never seen in an, an mm. epic three hour long movie before. It was really my first time, and I was like, Three hours and 50 minutes, let's be real. It's three hours and 40 minutes. Well, I was just thinking through the whole thing how it's it's good to watch once, but I just watched this. uh, This was the last film I watched uh, in 2020. Hmm. I decided to do it because I saw a video on the editing, and I'm like, that looks sexy. I need it. And then I watched it, and I'm like, that's great. And then I was sitting through it this time, I'm like, is this a movie that needs to be consumed twice? Because- (laughs) At first, mm-hmm. I was like, it's just long. But in a couple of weeks, we have Andrei Rublev coming up, and I can't wait to watch that again. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's just the length. I think there's like... I think it's... Yeah. It, it's Okay, I guess we have to recognize the duality of, of this film uh, generically. It mm-hmm. It's not just an epic. It's also a historical drama. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what makes it this way. <laughs> A yeah. lot of those do not need to be watched multiple times. Like, I mean, I, I think it's, it's, I'm glad that we're talking about it here with Hunter in the room because I think Hunter has the most to say about just the, how historical dramas are just kind of everywhere all of the time. And, Hunter, uh, speak. And they're irritating. Hunter is eating a fry. He will be yeah. back. Oh, just kidding. His microphone is like on are the they other Chick-fil-A side fries? of the room that, him right now. That may have been a bit oversold. I don't know if I have a lot to say. I just like to complain because it's just kind of the easy target, especially with like awards stuff. Just mm. being like, well, there they are. Historical dramas. Hooray. <laughs> and it's <just> Watchable? <laughs> yes. Will we care in five years? Probably not. I feel like most of them just die yeah pose that obviously against not the all of them because lawrence we still conservative podcasters right. my dad would make me listen to growing up who think that the best movies the only movies we should be making are the based off of Sour true story like sort of like and, and, patriotism know. and America. acts of valor and individualism clint eastwood movies <laughs> they love clint eastwood so much so much clint eastwood is fine I don't like, I like one of his movies. <laughs> He's fine, but why do people love him so much? It's just a thing. People just, I think a lot of times 
people would rather be reading a book. And mm-hmm. when you want to be reading a book, but you refuse to, you watch a historical drama. Or perhaps if you've been reading too many book and your eyes hurt. Or if you're like, I read Unbroken, but now it's a movie. Wow. That's yeah. another one. Maybe you do both. Yeah. yeah. But I feel like it's a, it's like a grandpa <laughs> move. I feel like, you know, the yeah. grandpa that's always reading the his- history book has to also watch the movie when he's not mm-hmm. reading it. And the then book. complain about how much it deviated from the historical <laughs> narrative to try and make it more of a movie. Mm-hmm. And he's like, they shouldn't have tried to make it a movie at all. They should have just put the history there. <laughs> Which is why <laughs> Lawrence just of just Arabia exists. In my brain. In my eyeballs. They should have just transported me there. I just wanted to see Gary Oldman be fat and do the Second World War. <laughs> right this time. Yeah. That's the exact one I was thinking of the entire time we were talking yes! about historical dramas. The Darkest Hour. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, what was that called again? Like, yeah. <laughs> can you remember? I didn't see it. It was just one of those ones that apparently was fine, maybe, or good, or something, or not. That's depending fine. on who you asked. And But it had to be nominated for Best Picture, and it had to be nominated for, you know, everything. I will say this about Lawrence Arabia. Uh-huh. It kind of slid off of me. I don't know that it will leave much impact in my brain. Mm. I, it was whatever. However, I... I am honestly kind of curious to read more about the like overall historical context and impact of like yeah. actually what happened because it does seem like an interesting it is pretty interesting stuff and yeah. also just because I don't know that much stuff about World War One honestly I feel like World so, War One yeah. gets ignored in favor yeah. of World War Two because mm-hmm. World War Two is very easy yeah. in a sense of we have the one people that you know we've culturally all, all decided is okay to demonize fascists Oof. obviously yeah. fascists literally <clears throat> the worst li- literally straight <laughs> genocide it's black and white. These are the bad guys. Right. We are the good guys. We yeah. can make it as unambiguous as we want to, even though it's a little bit more complicated like mm-hmm. that. To, uh, you know, if you ask me about anything mm-hmm. about Japan, um, right. obviously I can go on for hours. But yes. but we can make it easy, and World War One's not that. And mm-hmm. also, to be honest, America had less involvement in World War One yeah. than we so even did cares? in World War Two. So a big through line in care. this movie is about a reporter coming through from America and he's trying to like create a hero figure to like romanticize the war for Americans. And to, then like, he get realizes them it's real shitty. <laughs> yeah. He gets through and like he is at that slaughter and he's like, smile. Let here's your you, picture. Your, your bloody picture. You, you bloody human being. You yeah. damn ape. Which I think is really interesting. Like, I don't know, following the theme about cameras and technology and how technology is kind of what drove the people away. They were like, well, we can't have electricity if you guys don't know how to do the generators and you don't know how to do the generators without England, so I guess we'll all just leave. I don't know. That's kind of interesting. But at the same time, I'm kind of with Hunter that I don't think this movie will stick with me very much. Like, I might think about the cool desert shots and think about how it made me think about Star Wars. Yes. Thank you. Okay. I, yeah, I the whole time I was thinking about Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, because I was like, wow, what is the coincidence that we've watched two movies in a row that just feel like George Lucas was obsessed with them? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't, I mean, I would say I don't know explicitly. I haven't, like, read an interview with him saying, I, you know, all I think about all the time is, like, you know, the Hidden Fortress and uh, Harakiri and... Lawrence of Arabia, but that's that's exactly what he did. I mean, come on, yeah, it's all right there. Yeah, yeah. it's so beautiful the way that the desert looks. It's all just tattooing. That's yeah. why he cast Alec Guinness. Like, come on, mm-hmm. that's got to be. And also, <laughs> the score just moves in such a very like specific way. I feel like, and that's why I'm excited. Sorry, I'm nothing. I'm saying makes any sense, but I'm oh. very excited for us to get to or, original Star Wars because oh. it it does feel like it's the culmination of a lot of what we've covered. Mm. Um, while also, which is currently why we have Empire Strikes Back also in the lineup, because I think it, this is my this is my thought in 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 this. Let me say it. Let me say okay. it, and then disagree. <laughs> you say <laughs> it, and then I can be I, bitter. Okay. I feel like this is the culmination of a lot of different influences. George Lucas comes together, and he's like, "Okay, I'm taking this. I'm taking this. I'm taking all of these visual things from all of the greats. I care about." I mean, he really does Mm. have an interest in world cinema more than a lot of other people, you could say, even of the new Hollywood movement. He's very influenced by a lot of great things. And it's Mm. very interesting the way that he comes together and brings them together and makes something cohesive. And then Empire Strikes Back is when the blockbuster, like, 
like that we think of blockbuster now is born imo mm-hmm. i think that's mm-hmm. when the first one is i do not think it's the original star wars anyway that's why we're doing both that makes sense to me okay uh, well that that's that's three agreements but also <laughs> didn't see because that we have empire strikes back in there we had to settle for andre rublev instead of the quintessential Tarkovsky movie Stalker, but it would have fallen in between those two movies. But I've also <laughs> heard that you thought that Andre Rublev was better. So oh yeah, no, I, I like that it. movie more. But I, uh, speaking from a hundred essential movies list standpoint, I think the the list has suffered due to our um, collective. Um, yeah, it's our podcast, not theirs. Yeah. They can fuck off. Yeah, I just find it funny. I don't know if this story's ever been told on the podcast. So, potato finger friend here, uh, the reason that this podcast it. exists at all is because they went off to Bookshop in Seattle, saw a poster of the 100 Essential Movies, yeah. and saw, ah, that's, that's a wee bit shit, ain't it? I can do it better. Okay. It and then you did. I, mean, honestly, I will amend. It was not in Seattle because Seattle people have better taste. It was in <laughs> North Carolina, and it was oh. a poster hung up in my friend's bedroom that somebody else had given them that they that didn't buy it for themselves. And I was looking at it, and it did have like it had like four Nolan movies in yeah, it, and like five them, Tarantino, Tarantino movies, movies, like all three separate like Lord of the Rings, every and Star Cooper Wars. Movie. Like it was just it, it yeah. just didn't. It was like okay, well, there's lazy. actually no room for any. And I, I tried to find a movie that wasn't american yeah and i think i found like three yeah mm. like i'm like no joke and one of them was battle royale <laughs> okay interesting pick <laughs> yeah. I, I like that movie but interesting. right which yeah. is just a yeah it just feels weird to i don't know anyway so i had to be like okay. i mean it seems like that list was made by a white man not gonna yeah. lie yes oh, yeah. and it was oh, yeah. it was made by an american white man obviously what so i i went and i was like okay i'll but this has to be just a dumb one yeah and so i looked up hundred essential movies <laughs> and that's what every single freaking list looked like like world because cinema gets entirely like, ignored i like about this movie the hundred essential films we obviously have to include the darkest hour i mean how could we not <laughs> everything has to be did it appear at the oscars recently no but did it make money at the box office yes yeah. fast and furious eight you're in. <laughs> I think the real 100 Essential Movies list is just Paddington 2 100 times. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. just somebody on Twitter on. who is like an obsessive Paddington 2 <laughs> stan. And all they do is they comment on every Phoebe Bridgers post by saying, hey, Phoebe Bridgers, uh, how about just like what you, Paddington 2, right? I mean, please, please watch Paddington 2. <laughs> Uh, and I've started getting aboard the hype train, and now yes. we've collectively promised to uh, pay Phoebe Bridgers forty dollars if she watches <laughs> Spanning <Yeah>. Into. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so it's we're just, getting there. It's such a sweet movie. Um, I'm glad I I, I did make it. it on this list. It is on yeah. the list. I will I will defend one, one to time, the death. So like, it's only on okay. once, but it's on there. <laughs> you know. Um, Lawrence of Arabia and important. We, Everybody I talk to who's old has seen it and mm-hmm. knows it and likes it. Uh, film fans have mm. given it pretty high ratings. It is obviously very influential visually. One of, honestly, a cinematic great. I yeah. still don't, I don't think, I was thinking about Dune. I was thinking about Denis Villeneuve. He does a lot of deserts, whatever. And I was like, he's never shot anything. This like, he's like kind of the God, him and like Deacons mm. working together is like peak cinematography now in our eyes. And it doesn't, I don't think it like touches this movie. Yeah. Like it, it's yeah. got, it's got all the good things. Um, but it's very entertaining for me to watch. And as soon as I'm done with it, like right now, I don't really care anymore emotionally. Yeah. It's that sort so of movie. It's, it's how it's like, how it is. I, I have it placed really high in, well, I have it in my pantheon of movies that I really love hmm. for the same reason that the, godfather one is there because the cinematography makes me audibly moan while watching it <laughs> and no other reasons Again, like i love being I able could, to see anna's face <laughs> i could i could drop either of those movies i don't really like mafia movies i don't really like historical epics that much but the cinema the cinematography, cinematography. it's so star I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I Anna, love for it. Causing you such pain. I love it. This is what the podcast is all about. <laughs> it's all about at least one of us 
being singled out to be uncomfortable. Yeah. It'll be you next. Just wait for next <laughs> week. <laughs> okay. You're yeah. going to be all like... <laughs> Is eight and a half secretly filled with like random mermaids Ooh. and... <laughs> Nightmare Wait, creatures. Okay, that's the second time you brought up mermaids. Oh, yeah. Like, oh yeah, about mermaids? the mermaids. It's thing. a thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. it's uh, I have a very limited selection of fears. Like I really like horror movies, but I am afraid of uh, Babadook type dream monsters and mermaids. Uh, for a number. Do I of have reasons. a horror film for you? It's actually a TV show. It's called H Two O. Uh just yeah. That. <laughs> I don't H2O like that. H Two O is the hundredth movie don't. on our list now. So. <laughs> I think I finally cracked the code, though. The reason why I don't like both of those is because when I was a child, I associated both of those creatures as things that would eat my toes. And something could threaten to kill me, and I wouldn't care, but threaten to eat my toes, and i die inside. I'm terrified. I can't. I, I just can't. I've never heard that before. Oh. <laughs> the funny thing is... Like, I don't know why that seems like something that, like, a really weird parent would do anyways, but I'm going to eat your toes. <laughs> like, I'm wondering if you had one of those experiences and, like, that was it. Like, you were, like, a child or a baby and, like, Maybe. some family friend or some parent, like, nibbled on your toes. And from that, <laughs> that point on, it's the end. Not me too. I, have, Aiden, that's I, what... will, I will defend you and say that I am afraid of fish in the ocean because I am afraid they will eat me, but eating mm. me starts with my feet. Yeah. Okay. Maybe it's a logical thing where you're like, if they're going to start, that's the thing closest to them right now. Yeah. I I don't know. I, I'm sorry. That's it. I'm very frazzled. It's kind I'm of very a frazzled. moment, you know what I mean? <laughs> Eight and a Half doesn't have any mermaids in it, and I'm actually really excited to watch it again because the first time I watched it, I liked it, and it, it has stuck with me. I think about mm. it at least every week. Hmm. Um there's a specific moment that I'm just like, whoa. I love having um, so many but I didn't friends. give it a very high rating because there are parts of it that I really didn't like. Mm. And I'm curious how I feel about it now because it's been yeah. s- 10 months. Gotcha. I, actually, that's, I, I figured it would have been longer. I keep putting eight and a half on, then turning it off because I'm like kind of digging the vibe of the movie. But I've seen pictures of Federico Fellini, and he just looks like a massive wanker. And I just every time I start the movie, I just picture his face, and I'm like, I can't, I can't right now. <laughs> I can't. Uh, yeah, he doesn't seem like a great guy. I don't know. Hmm. But- he he just gives me like all the worst energies. Like if someone would came out and just started like me tooing Federico Fellini, I wouldn't doubt it for a sec. I don't know why. That's he reminds probably me. why there's a particular scene in the movie that I is the reason why I didn't give it five stars. Mm. Oh. And if you get that vibe from him, oh boy. then that also checks out why there's one particular scene in the movie that I just uh, really don't like. I don't know why I th- when I think of him, I picture Jura number three mm-hmm. <laughs> from 12 Angry Men. Jura number three. Uh, is it three yeah. or two? The... No, it's three. Okay. Three is the, the... The main antagonist. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, yes. Angry, loud, shouty man, much sweat. That guy. I hate him. I don't like sweat. Did we talk about this already? Yeah, we did. We did. We did. I, I know you're adverse to sweat. <laughs> I, I don't. That's why you live uh, where you do. Where yep. it's not as hot. 85 I, uh, as soon as i said where it's not as hot i had to look over to see hunter's expression because i knew he'd be sad and longing and he is <laughs> oh hunter it's come only... visit me <laughs> i would like to go out somewhere like that again but yeah it's like it's not even warm today it was actually cold yesterday mm-hmm. um but it's like 70s ish today yeah, it and snowed i'm like no <gasps> that lunch yesterday and really? then um yeah whoa it snowed for like a minute at lunch and then it was just warmish chillyish. It's a sort yeah. of warm where you put on a jumper because the wind chills. Mm-hmm. Just sucks. Yeah, it was just kind of the Did you just say the wind. jumper? Jumper. I did say jumper. jumper. I love you very much. <laughs> I love jumpers. <laughs> <laughs> they jump. <laughs> they jump. <laughs> just like uh Ryan Gosling. He can jumps. jump on me anytime. Confused. Not, oh, like, ho, ho, not ho. like Hayden Christensen. 
Is Hayden Christensen jump? He's in a movie entitled Jumper, I believe. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, that's about wow. like teleportation. Yeah. Yeah. No. I've never seen it. I don't know. I, I was, saw that. I was it's about trampolines. Trailer so many times when I was younger. I'm like, I'm gonna see that someday. And now that today is someday, I definitely don't want to see that. Movie. <laughs> I've heard that it's that he has a good performance in it. Like I heard people tell me, oh no, he's not the worst actor ever. But mm. anyway, we should probably wrap up. Uh, because we definitely talked about this movie yep. for sure. Sure. And we did. We didn't even mention the name of the director, David Lean. David Lean. Director of Bridge on the River Kwai also, which... Um, another movie that I watched the first few minutes of because my dad wanted me to and uh, I didn't find it interesting. Every time my dad walks into the basement and I'm watching something, he's like, is this Bridge on the River Kwai? Because Oof. it's like <laughs> the movie that he thinks I'd be watching every time. <laughs> Perfect. I can never imagine walking into the basement and thinking you are watching that movie. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's been a while. I I have watched. I just we'll assume every time that it's the lure. Okay, it's go. the lure. Or uh, I I I haven't gotten you to watch any Shinya Sukamoto movies yet. But just you wait. Just you wait. Make me I won't watch make it Anna. Too. Anna, that would hurt Anna too much. I, I oh, I'm not comfortable doing that. Thank you for that. understanding me. But Potato Friend. I don't friend, know what we're talking about. Oh, Potato Friend. Uh, I don't. I have a similar aversion. I just you need feel bad about it. I think is the difference. Well, I feel guilty about here, having an just, aversion to particular kinds of cinema. You can just include me in it, and then it'll be a, yeah. a good group. Why would you feel guilty yeah. about that? <laughs> because because people I know like it, and it's things that they're excited. Yeah, about. I want to be excited about it too, but it makes me sad. No. I mean, um, I think that's, I mean, like, I don't like all of the music that you like, but I like hearing you talk about it because you're excited about it. I don't like any music that is false. That's a false equivalency. Anyway, so I have to go. Yeah. <laughs> we kind of ran into your time limit here. Yeah. I, yeah, I've been texting my friend because I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I thought you said that you're going at 15. Are you not? Oh, I that mixed it up because 15 of minutes you ago. were going to go at yeah. this 15. Okay. Heck. Wait, what? Is my clock off? Maybe my clock's off. It's currently eight o'clock our time. Okay. It is seven o'clock my time. And so I'm so to the call exact my time. In China. Any parting okay. thoughts? Uh, you know. Um, I do not. Pil- parallelogram of the parting mm-hmm. winds. Anything bef- before you leave? <laughs> I feel like the fact that we don't have any parting thoughts is the perfect way to end this yeah. podcast about this mo- it's, movie. It's kind of true. And none of us like, will ever think about this movie like, again. Kind of like end. how the movie ends. It has that one edit. <laughs> Uh, Peter O'Toole is cute. Yeah. I guess the final thought remains. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, so. the Camel noise. <laughs> See you guys. Um, we definitely Bye. forgot to record in the Zoom meeting, so That's okay. Hunter, yeah, I'll send no. you my Reaper stuff. And cool. sure. All right. Bye. Chill. Bye. Hit the record button. Ah, Beep. French. <laughs> you gotta love so them good. French. Guys, I um, armed and am recording Reaper all by myself. Is there a way to turn up the volume on the headphones? Uh, yes. yeah. I, I'm number three. If you can just turn me up just a bit. Just a bit. Okay, there we go. There we go. Can we turn me up a little bit too? Just to yeah, because yeah, I want to hear you. I want to hear your takes. I want to know what love is. Can you hear all of us fine? <laughs> I want beep, you beep, boop, to boop, show beep, beep, boop, boop. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I'm in a weird space. What's that? I don't know. It's like a weird st- like, electric keyboard or something. I think okay, I thought maybe it was like a startup for some like, like what, Dreamcast. That's what I thought it sounded like, and that's mm-hmm. kind of why I put it there. Okay. Like hey, it did anyone like an old load the camel noises? Up. I didn't do camel noises. I'm sorry. We will. Yeah. I can next time. I thought this That'd would be have cool. been the prime opportunity for random camel noises. Would have <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of like a camel noise. Yeah. Lego Yoda dying. Yep. Equals camel. <laughs>
<laughs> That's, That's my really best good. camel impression. It was impressive. Uh, honestly, Ooh. I'll give it cool. to you. <laughs> I love how you, you cover your face when you say something, uh, especially on a podcast. It's, it's perfect. Yeah. Nobody can no. see your, your look of shame. It's because, well, it, no matter what, it's because... I know in my heart what it's because. But Milena laughed at me when I said it out loud. Oh. So. I won't laugh at you. Oh, a whole brochure. How fancy. This is my book oh. that I take notes in and write poems in. Oh. Why are we doing visual gags in this audio medium? I can't even see Get now. roasted, guys. This is actually like, I also, not gonna lie, I zoned out like three minutes ago, it's and fair. I was thinking about Zero to Act, <laughs> and I started crying. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm so glad that we have it back. I know. You I can mean, watch I'm it probably now. gonna watch it you tonight, can? because I, I'm Where? not oh, even shit. joking. Are we gonna watch it It was tonight? during our Shakespearean tragedies, but and I... I zoned out. And started oh. crying about Cyrano de Bergerac. And oh. that's where I'm at yeah. right now. It's really good. Yeah. Where does one watch the Cyrano de Bergerac? Let's watch Cyrano. it together, please. They got the National Sorry, that was probably really bad for the mic. Like, but can we please all watch it together, like, on something? Can we? I mean, Can you do that through the... Wait, I don't think there's a way to sync it up. Please just say a word of uh, where it is. It, well, it's Anywhere. not... So it's it's a private link on YouTube. Oh. We'll hook you I up. I don't know <laughs> how you found it, Anna. Okay, no. So I found it on a different video. And then in the description, looking back, this was probably dumb. But in the description, it was like, here's a link to the fixed version. And I was like, yep. And that was the <laughs> private link. Ah. Fascinating. That's very lucky. I'll save it forever. And I immediately downloaded it. Ooh, excellent. Now well the entire done. internet knows my illegal actions. Oh, no. Aww. Well, we can balance out. Let's all say a crime that we've committed uh, since last Thursday. Let's not, okay. like, uh, you know, bring, bring it too far Hunter, back. you go first. You've probably done the most. Just um, pick the most exciting one. Mm-hmm. Uh, most exciting crime. I... <laughs> okay. I pirated Lawrence of Arabia. <laughs> 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 I stole Aiden's Amazon account. Like, I don't know. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. No, uh that's that's I'm fine. Too, I'm too, I'm too I, innocent. I, I was mildly paranoid because I've been buying supplies for an art project I've been planning to do on my Amazon account. So if any of I y'all just looked anything. at my order history, you just see like a, a bunch of condoms and like hat pins <laughs> and uh <laughs> What? Large needles and bits of like, uh, like reinforced like yeah. steel. He sent me a screenshot of just the order with no context. And 3D glasses, and I was um, just like, "What the fuck are you planning?" <laughs> it's 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 great. It's great. It's gonna be great, and or it's gonna be hor- horrifically awful. It's it's really I don't just need those the most in my somehow head. it's expected. Yeah, I can't buy all of the fruit over Amazon, so I have to go in person and just pick up a bunch of fruit. But. Um, and dairy <laughs> products. I can't even see Anna's face. I right think now. it's I very imagine. entertaining that I'm the only one that can see Anna's face. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, <laughs> well, well, gosh. Now that that's on on the internet, I wish I had something weird to say. I feel like I'm the only one who actually committed a crime. I guess Anna and I kind of both committed the same crime. He yeah. committed the same crime. Um. I checked out today at a grocery store with somebody else's credit card. Is that illegal? No. Unless you stole so. the credit card. Do the I, don't th- I don't think you could call it theft. Mm. I don't think so either. But, I mean, I'm not going to reveal whose credit card it is. So, mm. God, Just don't well, check your it, bank account. That makes it sound like guy. you stole it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have no money. Yeah. Why have all, uh, all of my money gone to buy Beyond Burger? Yeah. I'll be honest. That's what I did. I I bought vegan meat, guys. That's, <gasps> that's the oh, truth. my money nice. for vegan meat! <laughs> oh, you didn't man. even have the decency to buy bloody meat. 
Ooh. to have blood on Stop your hands. Stop right there, sir. Stop I right there. flower meat. You bought flower meat? Is that what you That's said? That's what it tastes like. It smells like flowers. It it tastes... Uh, it doesn't taste like flowers, but it smells no. like flowers. It's interesting. Have you uh, have you never good. tried Beyond Meat or anything like that? I've had the Beyond Burger. But when it's uncooked, it smells like flowers. Well, that's cute. Yeah. Because <laughs> are you eating a... What is... <laughs> it looked like it was a cookie, but it also looked like it was a cross. <laughs> my grandma sent it to me in my Easter box. <laughs> is it edible or were you just... No! no. <laughs> <laughs> I just... <laughs> Uh, you guys leave me alone I've had such like, a weird day we're like 25 yeah. minutes outside of Lawrence of Arabia at this uh-huh. point guys so far out uh, I won't go on the whole tangent about Ken Russell's demons because I could and it would make Animate feel too uncomfortable and so I just won't <gasps> nice Cool. Sorry, I, I may or may yeah. not have something in picture in picture. <laughs> oh, <well. laughs> we cut cut this Sports. out. Cut this out or stick it at the end or whatever. Okay. Oh, good, but good. Jack Campbell just won his eleventh game Ooh. in a row, and everybody's all happy for Yay. him. And it was very close. They they had pulled the other team pulled their goalie, and so they had six people on the ice versus the five people in the last 15 seconds and it was five to six and Campbell was freaking out and you could see me took off his mask and he's drinking water and he was like, oh, like oh, oh, and he did it. Thank you. So why won. did they pull their goalie? So you mm. can do that. And at the end of a game, if you're really close, like if you, if you're one or two goals away and you're just desperately trying to win, you can pick up your goalie because, Hey, you're already losing whatever, but you can have another man on the ice offensively. <sighs> I don't know how to feel about our ungendered hmm. potato friend watching hockey while we're doing a podcast. I like, wasn't paying attention I mean, to it, but the score was just up there, uh, and then at the fine, end, it, but it like, popped into that bit. I feel like under scene. The game right has now. ended. Like, like I'm invisible. <laughs> I closed, I closed like, the window. Like, <laughs> the I mean, I was there. crying about Cyrano de Bergerac I while you were talking about Shakespeare. So. This is that kind of day, okay? Yeah, we, we came, we got it together. I mean, we ha- we've can I just say something about lemonade. my day? Yes, please. I woke up this morning and I got out of the shower and I took my roommate to urgent care and we were there for an hour and she found that there was nothing wrong with her. So I got back to campus and I ate lunch and I watched Lawrence of Arabia in one sitting. Awesome. And then I ate dinner and I'm doing this. It's just been a weird you day. You trees. Yeah. I did. Oh, I did. <laughs> <laughs> And I broke a tree. Yeah. What, what was that thing that you used? The, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I love it. Anyway. Your little pally is, I love... is growing up into such a beautiful, beautiful tree monkey. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, cute. Wait, you should show them. Okay, well, it the... doesn't have to be right I, now. I will. But I, I, will. Took, I, I climbed a tree also the other day. My hands are still like scraped. Ooh. That's how it be. Um, I let's see. I, I still have the meme open. The the Serb kills an Austrian, and I feel like.